Hi everyone, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about one of the best and easiest ways to remove almost anything from an image in Photoshop. So here I've got an image, and you can follow along with me and download this image below in the link in the description. And what we're going to do in this situation is use some of the new AI technology in Photoshop to really start utilizing the incredible processing power that is available within Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new layer and a duplication of the background layer. So what we can do is we can select our background layer and we can hit Commander Control J, which will duplicate it. Now let's go ahead and activate one of our newer tools, which is the Object Selection Tool. And it looks like this. Let me show you what it looks like. And you guys might be familiar with it if you've watched my video on select anything with one click in Photoshop. And that's one of my other YouTube videos. But as you can see here, uh, Photoshop has already kind of isolated the leg here. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and that will select the arm as well. So we're getting a really nice initial selection without having to do very much work at all on our part. But now what I would like to do is um, slightly increase the selection around the edge of this person. And the way that we can do that is by using our select modify expand command. So we'll go ahead and use that. I'm going to increase it by 15 pixels and that seems good. Now there's a little bit of cleanup that I'd like to do. And for that, I'll just use my lasso tool. You can also hit L on your keyboard to activate your lasso tool. And I'm gonna hold down the shift key, which will allow me to add to a selection. So I'm just gonna add the rest of that foot right there. Um, and it seems like we are ready to go. So this is what I would like to remove from my image. The first thing I want to do in the removal process is going to be to choose edit content aware fill from the drop down menu. That's going to bring us into this new dialog box and this new screen that's going to allow us to do some really good stuff. So here on this side of the screen is what our fix is going to end up looking like. So I'm just increasing the, uh, the size of the preview and I'm just zooming it into the area that we need to work on. And you can see right off the bat by default, it has properly removed the person. And I would say that's 95% correct. Now, for something in Photoshop to remove something with 95% accuracy by default, first of all, is super amazing and should be applauded for what it's done. But let me tell you a little bit more about what exactly this whole interface is. So we have the area that we're looking to remove and you can see that we do have a green, uh, overlay on part of the image. And so that overlay has to do with over here, the opacity, and it says show sampling area. So the show sampling area is basically the area that Photoshop is using in order to, it's the data or the information that Photoshop is using to remove the person in the image. And so there are some things that it's referencing, for example, like the plane and the face and this little spot there, and maybe his legs, that I don't necessarily want Photoshop to use when it's making its replacement of where the, the adult is, right? So I'll come up to my upper left-hand corner and I'm gonna choose the sampling brush tool, but I'm going to put it on a mode of subtract. And what this means is that I'm going to go ahead and paint 
and subtract the areas that I do not want Photoshop to use when recreating the pixels and replacing where the adult is. So I'm just basically painting off of this little aviator right here. And I'm removing most of the information of him, but I'm also leaving all of the information in the surrounding area to make the blend. So let's go ahead and just choose our add to sample area. And I'm just going to in include a few other areas to really try and make this be almost a perfect replacement of the person. So there are a couple different things that we can do over here and changes that we can make to the default. But as you can see, the default got us 95% of the way there and I'm pretty impressed. So show sampling area. That's basically, if you turn that on and off, you're gonna see the green outline of the area that Photoshop is referencing. The next thing that I wanna point out is the sampling area options. And so you can choose to sample all layers, which will help a little bit with the blend if you want. You can also change the way the math is done, but in my experience, auto is definitely going to be the best. You have the option to change the amount of color blend that you see in the surrounding pixels, and that's gonna be modified by the dropdown under color adaption. Rotation adaption, if I put it on low or on medium, you can see we do get an error message here, but that's okay. That's just basically saying you might get some wonky results if you, uh, if you turn this on and that's fine. See, immediately with rotation adaption on, you can see we've got some bark up here, which we don't necessarily want. So let's go ahead, let's see what medium looks like. Yes, I know. So it just seems to be getting us further and further away from a sweet spot fix. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back, set it to none. But I am going to go ahead and activate scale. And what scale will do is scale will allow this math and this replacement to take into account the fact that not everything is always photographed from directly on and some things are skewed by perspective. So this is taking into account perspective when making the fix. So you can see here, we still have this uh, little flying piece of bark, which I'm not super thrilled about. So we'll go ahead and turn that off for now. Now mirror has to do, yes, I know I might end up with wonky results, but mirror has to do with rotating it, not by perspective, but by the mirror image of something. So if you want to mirror image something, you would turn that on. Okay, so we're gonna keep that off because we're not doing anything with a mirror image at the moment. So right off the bat, I'm pretty happy with the way that this uh, person has been removed. And I think we have a little bit of uh, regular cleanup work to do in Photoshop proper, but that's really it. Again, like I said, if you want to download this image and follow along with me, you can do that in the description. There's a link to download the image. Let's go ahead and press OK. And this is going to output to a new layer. So the, the changes that we make are going to go to a new layer. Now, because we duplicated our layer originally, we could choose current layer as our output because we're working on a duplication of the background. We'll go ahead and press OK. And now we can hit Command or Control D to make a deselection of our original marching ants. And now we have a little bit of blending to fix. So I'll start by creating a new layer. I'm going to use my healing brush tool. I'm going to sample along the edge of the log, and then I'm gonna line it up 
with the area that I'd like to paint it into. And then I'm just going to go straight over that area and get rid of that weird, wonky, unaligned uh, bit. So if we look at our before, holding down Option or Alt, there is our before and our after, our before and our after. Pretty phenomenal results in only a few minutes of work. And again, like I said, the default settings in the edit content aware fill dialog box really got us 95% of the way there. We didn't have to do very much whatsoever um, in regular Photoshop after we brought it out of that. So it's a significant improvement. One of the real luxuries of anything that says content aware is that it's um, utilizing AI technology. And every time the AI technology gets smarter, Photoshop gets updated with that smarter tech and it starts to perform better and better and better for you. So if for some reason something's not working right now and you're using the content aware or AI technology to get it there, you know, check it again in a couple of months. It's not to say that the, the whole tool doesn't work, right? It's always evolving. So that's the really exciting thing about some of these tools. Now, I did want to say if you've learned something in today's course, please feel free to subscribe and ring the bell so that you know the next time I come out with an instructional tutorial on Photoshop or Lightroom. And also, if you want to go onto sharppixel.com forward slash store, there are hundreds of free notes, downloads, custom brushes, actions, everything you could possibly need for portrait retouching, and you can download it all for free. Again, that is sharkpixel.com forward slash store. So I will see you on the next course.